Welcome back to chapter four. Today we're going to be looking at section four, which is not actually on systems at all. Um, sections four and five are going to be on linear inequalities. And so the next section will be on systems of linear inequalities. This one's just on linear inequalities by themselves. So we're gonna see how to graph them and also kind of what they mean. So, our learning targets is I can graph solutions to linear inequalities in two variables. And we're going to look at how we can graph inequalities. Now, the nice thing is that inequalities are almost identical to graphing lines. So the stuff that we've been working with with lines, it's the same thing. There's just two extra things to look at in addition to what we normally look at. So if we were to graph a line, we have y equals one half x plus three. Um, to do this, we're going to start out at our y-intercept is three. Which is of course right in the middle. Um, and then we're going to go up one over two. So we can go up to four, over to two, up to five, over to four. Um, oh, my initial point went away. Oh, and then this point went away. Why can I only have two points at a time? All right, so, and now we can draw our line. Okay, like any time we draw lines, straight edges are always nice. And so that's, that's graphing a line. Well, what would an inequality be different? So y is greater than or equal to 1 half x plus 3. That line is going to go in exactly the same place. So we had our red line. Now let's use orange. So the line is going to go into the exact same place. But now we need to think about shading one side or the other of it. We want when y is greater than or equal to 1 half x plus 3. Um, there's a couple different things people say, like, oh, if it's greater, you shade above. If it's less, you shade below. That can work, but it can also get you into a little bit of trouble. A better idea is just pick a point. Every point on one side of the line will work. Every point on the other side of the line will not work. So if we pick the point 0, 0, is 0 greater than 0 plus 3? Is 0 bigger than 3? No, zero is less than three. So the point zero, zero, the origin won't work. So let's pick a point on the other side. Now we could pick a point out here and plug it in, but I would pick a point along an axis. Like let's pick this point, zero comma four. Why would I pick zero comma four? Because we go four is greater than or equal to one half times zero, which is zero plus three. Is four greater than three? Yes, it is. So we would shade this side of the line. Um, we could also have, what if y was less than or equal to that? This is going to be the same idea, except we're, so the line is still going to be in exactly the same place. But now when we put in a point, say 0 comma 0, is 0 less than or equal to 0 plus 3? Yes, zero is less than three. So we would shade that side. Um, and so that's one of the differences between lines and inequalities. In an inequality, we need to shade because every point on that side is something that will satisfy it. Sometimes they ask us if we like to find a couple points that, set, that work. So to find a couple points, once you have the shaded side, you just literally find a couple points. So the point negative four comma four would work for this one. Like don't try and find something right next to the line, find something a little bit off the line. You can find stuff on axes. Zero comma six would work. Negative six comma zero would work. Negative seven comma zero would work. Negative eight comma zero would work. Um, negative 100 comma 100 would work. So don't don't try and find like, well, I wanna know what this point right here is because that's really close to the line. And what if your line was off by just a little bit because your 
straight edge slipped. Um, so find stuff that aren't right on the line. Um, so one of the differences, shading. The other difference is the or equal to. The or equal to or not or equal to. And that goes for the greater than and also the less thans. When we were graphing on um, on a number line, the or equal to's got solid points, and the not or equal to's got the open dots. Same idea, and those are called closed points and open points. We're going to have closed lines and open lines. Now, a closed line is not a clothes line like you would like dry clothes on, but closed as in a closed door or closed point, um, and it's solid. So it's just a solid line. The um, open point, the open line, the one where it's just greater than or less than, but not or equal to, what would an open line look like? Well, we can't make it open in the middle because that would be kind of weird to have a double line. This is where we get dotted lines. So the, the second thing, we need to think about shading, and we need to think about whether the line is solid or dotted. Um, when doing this on paper, I strongly recommend using a pencil because I know for me, a lot of times the, um, the thought on whether or not it's dotted is kind of an afterthought. Like I put the line where it needs to be, and then I think, oh, it needs to be dotted. If you write in pen, well, you're kind of out of luck. But cool things about pencils is you have the the point, the writing end of the pencil, the business end. If you flip the pencil over the other end, it's got this cool thing that's a dotted line maker. So if you have a solid line, you can always make a dotted line with it. It's awesome that they that they include that on pencils. Um, so as we're looking at um, sum we have y is greater than or equal to x minus 2 and y is greater than x minus 2. So we're going to look at the difference between these two graphs and they're going to be graphed in the same place. So x minus 2 our y-intercept is negative 2 and then the slope is 1 so we're going to go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1 and it's an or equal to so it's a solid line. For this one, same thing. We start out at negative 2. Then we go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. But now, since it's not or equal to, it's just a greater than, it's going to be A dotted line. Now we need to shade. So where is it going to be greater than or equal to? Now the or equal to means that the line itself counts. The line is an answer. When it's just greater than, that means that we're going up to the line, but the line itself doesn't count. So if we're looking at the point 0 comma negative 2, it'll work for this one, but 0 comma negative 2 does not work for that one because it makes it as an equal. It works for equal when it's an or equal to and it doesn't for the other. But the shading is going to be the same. Let's choose a point. Let's plug in the point 0, 0. Is 0 greater than or equal to 0 minus 2? Is 0 bigger than negative 2? Yes. Yes, it is. So we would shade this side. And the same thing, if we were to use the point zero, 0, where is it? So the only difference between these two lines is on the line itself. And on the line, like if you pick a point on the line, you can't tell which way to shade because it comes out as equal to. You want to pick a point off the line for either of them. Um, so now writing inequalities. We'll write some inequalities, sometimes from word problems. So here we have the Science Club is selling t-shirts and keychains to raise money. 
how many t-shirts and keychains could they sell to meet or exceed their goal? And then it gives us some information over here. T-shirts are $10, keychains are $2, and their goal is $500. They want to meet or exceed. So we're going to define some variables. Let x equal the number of t-shirts sold. And Y is the number of keychains we can make an equation. Now, this is an example of an equation that is really easy to make in standard form because we're looking for the, the total amount they sell. The total amount is going to be 10 times the number of t-shirts, right? If you sell five t-shirts, you just made $50 plus two times the number of keychains, and then it's going to equal 500, but it won't actually equal 500. So now we need to think which way is the, um, which way is the sign going to go? On the left, we have the amount that they're making. On the right, we have their goal. Can they make more than their goal? Can they make less than their goal? We're looking to see when they meet or exceed, so we want them to make more than the goal, and then, or meet, which would be the equal to, because if they make exactly $500, they've met their goal. Um, sometimes you'll have at least, if you have at least, or at most, um, at least means you're gonna have greater than or equal to. Um, if you have just more than, that's just gonna be a greater than. Um, and so there's some context there. So now we have 10x plus 2y is greater than or equal to 500. We can get this into slope intercept form, or we can graph it using our intercepts. If x equals zero, if x equals zero, we have zero plus 2y equals 500. So y equals 250. Notice here, I just went to equals because I'm just looking for where am I putting this point? I'm putting the point at 0, 0,250. So 250 is going to be right there. And then if y equals 0, we have 10x plus 0 equals 500. So x would equal 50. So we have 50 comma 0 is this one. And then, so we found our intercepts, we can connect the dots. It's solid because it's an or equal to. If not, I would have just had to get out that vertical line maker, or the, uh, the dotted line maker, and put some uh, holes in this one. And now, we need to think which way are we going to shade it. Now here's where the greater than or less than doesn't always work out right, thinking above or below. But we could plug in points. If they sell nothing, are they going to make the money they need? No. If they sell like a ton of everything, like out here, are they going to make the money they need? Yes. And so we would shade out here. Notice I you don't want to shade the negatives here because you're not going to sell negative t-shirts or keychains. So you want to keep it positive. Um, and you can shade. So any value out here is going to get them the amount they need to either meet or exceed the their, their goal. Um, we can write inequalities from graphs as well. So to do that, we're going to look to see the line. So we'll have y equals mx plus b, right? That's our standard form or our slope intercept form. So it won't be an equals. And let's see our y intercept here, the b, that's going to be at zero. So I'll put plus zero just to show it, but that wouldn't be in our answer. And then our slope, what are we doing? We're going up one over three. So we'll have one third x. And then which way are we shading above or below? Well, we can put 
a value here, let's say negative 2, 0. So we'll have, or 0, negative 2. So we'll have negative 2, 1 third times 0, plus 0, gives us negative 2, and this is 0, which is bigger? The negative 2 is bigger. So I picked a point that was in the shaded region, so simplified it out, we get that sign, which means that's going to be the sign of the inequality. So we have y is less than 1 third x. Let's try another one. And you can pause this right now if you want to and give it a shot. See if you can do this one. And then just push play and we'll go over it. So this one will have y, we'll have an x, and then our y-intercept here is 1. So we'll have plus 1. And the slope, we're going over 1, down 2. So that's a, we go down 2, then over 1. So that's a negative 2. And then we need to pick a point. We could plug in the point 0, 0. 0, 0 is in our our shaded region here. So as see, we have 0, negative 2 times 0, plus 1. That's going to be 0 and 1. And 1 is bigger than that, so the sign's going to go that way. But then it's also solid, so it's an or equal to. So we have y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 1. So from graphs, we can write inequalities, which again, it's basically the same as writing an equation from a graph. We need our slope and our y-intercept. We just also need to think about is it an or equal to or not, and which way is the sign pointing. Um, and then finally, uh, writing inequalities with one variable on the coordinate plane. Sometimes it comes out where we have like x is greater than or equal to 3. On a number line, we'd have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Number line greater than or equal to 2, we get a solid dot. And then it's greater than, we go this way. Right? We've already done that this year. Well, what if we were on the coordinate plane instead? We'd graph the line x equals 3, which is a vertical line. Which is right in the middle of these two lines. It's kind of awkward. Um, so it's a vertical line and it's solid because it's an or equals to. And then we want when it's greater than that. Well, when is x greater than 3? It's greater than 3 on this side. Um, same thing if we have y is less than 2. If we had our y number line, which we don't usually have a y number line, it's usually an x, but less than 2, we'd have an open circle, and then it would be going that way. So on the coordinate plane, the y equals 2 is going to be the horizontal line at 2, um, but since it's not an or equal to, it's going to be dotted. And then we want, when is it less than 2? Well, y is less than 2 down here. Because when y equals 0, that's less than 2. When y is negative, that's less than 2. So that would be graphing um, inequalities. Next time, we're going to look at systems of inequalities, which is the same thing, but twice. So I will see you in class, but until then, keep working problems, keep asking questions, and as always, happy mathing.